TC, <laughs> one of our female Harris's hawks that we used to hunt with, and we make money with them too. Um, they are desert birds, indigenous to the southwest of North America, Arizona, New Mexico, West Texas, and New Mexico. Uh, they're the only species of hawk that are gregarious naturally. They live in family groups together. They hunt together. Um, and so that's one of the great things about them that we love is that I can take other Harris's hawks and fly them at the same time. And so we can catch bigger game like jackrabbits and ducks and some kind of geese and stuff like that. Not domestic geese. <laughs> I got one you can get rid of. <laughs> yeah, you can catch Nemo. Fucking asshole. <laughs> He's a dick. <laughs> yeah, they'll gang up on the Didn't you tame Nemo? Nemo. The meanest of the goose. Oh, I tamed them all. I knew it. <laughs> we also use these birds to make money. And that's one, one of the great parts of it. Cool electronics. Maybe on a chest. Um. I, uh, a couple weeks ago, we have a, we got a call from this couple down in downtown Dallas, really rich neighborhood called University Park. Mm. And so, apparently there are these ducks roosting in this huge live oak tree, crapping on this guy's BMW. Oh. <laughs> Poor BMW. Poor Beamer. Right? <laughs> so the, they only show up at night, right? Because they're roosting. So we can get those. We have these hawks that hunt at night. And so it turn out to be Muscovy ducks. So we go up there at night and we have we had our little flashlights and shine them up in the tree and I had my bird on the fist and my employer had his bird. His bird is more um, she's hunted at night a lot more. So shine the light up there and she looked for a little bit and she flew over to the, an adjacent branch and kept it on there and moved a little bit, and so she got her bearing, and I thought, okay, I'm supposed to attack that big duck thing right there. So she flew in, nailed it off the tree that came tumbling down, and she's got this thing by the ass, and I'm flying around, and so I <laughs> reach in there and grab this duck, and then the other ones had taken off, and so I took my bird, and my bird eventually caught the big, huge drake, and now those ducks are a happy couple out at permaculture classroom, <laughs> Nick Ferguson's place, and they're just as tame as can be. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, I would have just... Put feed on that beamer and left. And said, yeah, you got him. We got him. We're good. <laughs> so you transported them out there yep. to his place in yep. My, Louisiana? The, uh, okay. um, the, cool. the man who owns this company lives out in Treeport. Oh, and cool. so Nick was coming down from Illinois, and so they met him in Treeport. Great. And now they're living out their happy lives, and I thought, oh, yeah, man, let's kill some ducks, you know? <laughs> But I mean, these are only like one pound birds, and it's like a seven pound drake and probably a six pound hen. That's a one pound bird. Yeah, she oh. well, she weighs about 890 grams. I don't know how what. Well Talk about how important that is, Chris. That you control their weight. Oh, okay. Well, the weight control is everything. You know, if they're too heavy, they're not going to want to hunt. They could really care less about you. And if they're too light, they're going to be starving, and, and they won't be able to fly because they're so you know they have no energy. And so. Um, the smaller the bird, the tighter, the more finite the weight control has to be. Um, but with these birds, they have about a 10 to 20 gram window. Two pounds. What's that? Two pounds. Is it? No, 190 uh, grams is six ounces. It's 30 grams an ounce. 890. Oh, I just said 190. Like that? 890. Now, Scarlet, my bird, weighs 1,000 grams. So she's a little bit bigger than this bird. Probably our bigger bird, biggest bird. Um, but uh, these birds probably have, she's got about a, a 10 gram window on on either side of 890 that she flies best at. The scarlet, my bird that flies at 1,000, she probably has a 20 gram on either side, so a 40 gram total window that she can fly at very well. Um, you know, they go heavier than that, they're just going to fly up in a tree and take a nap. And if they go lighter than that, they're going to sit frantic, you know, like, okay, i got to eat, i got to eat now. So they basically won't take any risks in their hunting. They want to sure. And, they, and then they would rather catch a rat than yeah. something like a rat, which is what. Yeah. What other animals do you have? Uh, birds. Hey, um, sorry. 
You have an nine. eagle owl. Yeah, he's in he's in Shreveport oh, right now he's filming beautiful. A, a TV show. Oh, cool. He's something awesome, called, guys. Like, something about the Salem Witch Trials. And they might have just signed him for like a five-season deal. Yeah. <laughs> if you Google eagle owl and hit the images, they're... Huge. And they're just... The eyes are... I've got pictures. Wild. They're like blaze orange. Yeah. Um, he's about this big. And he's got about a five-foot wingspan. Otherwise, I would have brought him. I brought him to the last workshop. Sorry, guys. He's, he's, a, a, he's, he's a, a busy giant. Owl. He looks like a giant great horned owl with orange eyes. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Do you get signed? Do you make some money on that? What's that? Do you make some money on that? If I'm flying, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've flown him for a National Geographic flight that's coming out. Yeah. End of this year, I think. Were you here? Oh, yeah. Were you we were beautiful? We did that oh, two years okay. ago. Oh, and, uh, yeah, he's gorgeous. And so, yeah, I got, I got paid for that, but, like, yeah, he's perfect. Sucks. Nice. Look at that. He's so he's beautiful. Yeah, guaranteed. Wow. 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 The wow. eyeballs were, like, crazy yeah. beautiful. And if they sign for five seasons, we'll talk about a money maker. Hey. You yeah. talk about how you use your lure to, uh, 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 Yeah, um, so, I mean, they come to the fist for tidbits, but as far as what the lure is concerned, it's a little bit different than falcons, what I was talking about before. This is, I can't show her because she'll freak out and want it. This is our lure. Hey, over here. Oh, you see? What is that? <laughs> see that? Hey, what are you doing? So this is our lure. We tie a piece of meat to it. It's like your hat looks like And we use it as an insurance policy. What I did for the... At the end of every hunt, okay, so my bird Scarlet, she was a brand new bird in September, and so it's starting from scratch. Um, if you ever get involved from in falconry, starting from scratch is like one of the best feelings. It's like, yeah, new bird, you know, you can do everything different because you're always getting better. And so at the end of every single hunt, regardless if she had not, caught nothing or like five rabbits, I would give her some meat on the lure. I'd throw out the lure, she'd catch it, give meat on it, every single time, every hunt. And so she... She recognizes that the lure means I get instant food. And so if we're out west somewhere and we're hunting where there's eagles, if an eagle starts coming in on a bird, we throw the lure out, throw it down. Yeah, we... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, she hit the floor. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> sure, we scrap. That looks like a job for an intern. <laughs> <laughs> so sh sh where? through the where's lure. The sure, we botched it. <laughs> better than a dead bird, you know? you got a couple weeks left. Or, the big thing around everywhere is Transformers, like Optimus oh, yeah. Prime coming in. No, I'm talking about <laughs> telephone poles, you know, they fly up there. Lots of birds are lost every year as Transformers. And so, if you see them flying up to a transfer, you just whistle and start swinging the lure, and they, they, they just turn right around and come into that lure. When's the uh, article coming out on Bird Freedom? About this? Soon. I'm done hunting. I mean, actually, I think I have one hunt to do this weekend. Um, and then I'm probably putting my birds up for the molt. She's going up for the molt. Um, uh, my boss has a, a, a nice big flight chamber in Shreveport that she'll go to so she can molt out and keep her flight muscles. Um, do, you feed them a lot, do you feed them a lot more when they're molting? Yep. Um, molting out and growing out new feathers takes a lot of energy, and they don't molt out in the winter days. Harris hawks have a particularly quick molt as far as birds are concerned. They take about three months to molt out all their feathers. And so you feed them up, you get them fat, you don't really associate with them. You just kind of walk in, throw the food and leave, because you want them to be as calm as possible so they don't get any, any stress. It's me! <laughs> Can you tell about how you get started to catch a bird, so on and so looking. forth? Sure. Um, well, uh, wait, like, started, started? Yeah. Well, the first thing you need to do is find... <laughs> oh. I think you need to leave. Just, just go. Uh, she's, Look she's at his ears. He's like, what the fuck? Man. <laughs> <laughs> this ears is so, not like, god damn, so I didn't do I, anything. When I was talking about starting over with yeah, the new yeah. bird, one of the things good, I did with good, Scarlet though. is that I introduced her to as many crazy things as possible. So she... <laughs> Couldn't care less about my roommate's 180 pound English Mastiff, but walked right up to her and smells her feet. She doesn't care. And she didn't do that to Charlie either. Never, never. <laughs> TC is from um, the owner of this company. He's, he's, she lives over there, and he has one dog, so she's just used to that dog and none others. Not cats. She kind of wants to eat cats. 
because they're small, you know. She thinks she can take them. See, she, she, she wants to buy me. She's not, the, she's not as tame as the rest of the birds just because she's kind of been on the back burner. But first thing you got to do is, when it's trying to start out with falconry is find a sponsor, which is a general or master falconer, to sponsor you. You become their apprentice, and they teach you the ways of falconry, and you get to scrub the shit off the floors and clean the <laughs> knees. <laughs> um, sounds, oh, like sounds like an intern job. Sounds like Sounds like a job for the guy who brought the birth of shit all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think that is too is cleaning the shit up today. <laughs> Yeah, we had a, I was down in Waco this past weekend, and we had an apprentice with us. Oh, man, we went bow fishing, and he was carrying the spears in the boat. It's always fun to have an apprentice around. But, um, so, you, uh, you find a sponsor, right, and you start studying, because there's a lot of things you have to know. You have to know husbandry, uh, medicine, history, um, all the different birds, you know, silhouettes and sizes and stuff like that. Because um, you have to take a state given test. And I always say this at the events that the federal government is now out of dealing with falconry. It's now done state by state. So, one win for in that little group. Um, after you take and pass your test, you have to build a muse, which is where the hawks hang out when you're not hunting them. It's a minimum 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight chamber um, where they live, kind of like an aviary that can fly around on the inside. You get that inspected by your state biologist, and uh, then they sign off, and they start pushing your paperwork through. And this whole process can take, um, I mean, at least the paperwork takes about uh, five months on average. Um, I got a guy who's might and wants him to be my apprentice this year, but he's dragging his feet. I'm telling him, you want to uh, trap a bird by October, man, you got to start, you, know, you need to start setting up your game because you have a lot of reading to do. Um, didn't really take me that long to do everything because I read since I was like six years old, and so I kind of knew everything. I, <laughs> I guess I don't want to toot my own horn, but um, my grandpa's a falconer, my dad's a falconer, my uncle's a falconer, um, and so I'm third generation. And I would like to pass it on to my children whenever that happens. If, if. If you can find a woman that'll live with you. <laughs> I come with all these pre existing conditions. She's coming into this craziness. What they were initially asking about. So, like your first bird. Yeah. You have to track it. Yes. You can't buy your first bird. No, you cannot buy your first bird. It has to be wild trapped. How do you track it? It just depends on the bird, but. <laughs> Oh, you on, jump on them when they land. <laughs> you get a rabbit go, with a big hook. Yeah. <laughs> you let it out in the field, and it hops around. So you set your drag really loose. I got a question. Yeah. You talked about the state uh, biologist uh, signing off on everything. Is that like?